Hello everybody, David here, and this is another Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Class Archetype Breakdown. And in this particular breakdown, we're going to take a look at one of the new monk monastic traditions that is in the new Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. And we're going to break down the Way of the Long Death monastic tradition today. So, whenever you create a character in D&D 5th Edition, you choose one of the 12 core classes in a player's handbook. That goes everything from a cleric, fighter, druid, monk, anywhere to casters such as sorcerers, wizards, and uh, warlocks. So once you choose your core class, you're going to get later on, depending on what class first off that you choose, you're going to get to choose more flavor for that class or specialize that baseline class to something uh, to, to more your liking. So when you choose the monk, for instance, because this deals with the uh, way the long death monastic tradition, when you have your baseline monk, you will get all of these skills from level 1 to 20. And you can see you get a multitude of things. Your base martial arts damage goes up as you level. You get key points, which is the bread and butter mechanic of the monk. You get a free natural movement all the way up to 30 feet. And then you get a numerous amount of class features every single level. There's not a level that goes by for the monk, which is one of the most, probably one of the only classes where you have so much versatility and utility, making the monks one of the most powerful classes in D&D 5th edition. So now that you see all of this good stuff that you get, at level 3 you get to choose a monastic tradition, which, like I said, is sort of like more flavor to your monk. So there's, you know, there's, a, there's an elemental type of monk where you can cast spells. There is a, uh, a flurry type of monk, which is based more on martial arts. And this is the Way of the Long Death. And this, like I said, this is in the new, the, the new companion for the Sword Coast Companion Adventures Guide. And when you choose the Way of the Long Death Monastic Tradition, this is where you want your monk to be obsessed with the meaning and the mechanics of dying. Sounds pretty creepy, I know it does, but it actually makes a lot of sense. So when you play your monk, your monastic tradition and your monastery over the ages have captured creatures and have prepared elaborate experiments on how to capture them more efficiently how to record and understand the moments of their demise on the creatures that you try to find out how they die. So when you gather all this information over the centuries, the monks have used this knowledge to guide their understanding of martial arts with more death, yielding more uh, a more deadly fighting style. And this is actually really nice. And like I said, you're going to get more features on top of the, the 20 or so that you get already. So when you choose your monastic tradition at level 3, you're going to get Touch of Death. And when you get Touch of Death, this is where your study of death allows you to extract vitality from another creature as it, near, as it nears its demise. So when you reduce a creature within 5 feet of you to 0 hit points, killing it, or rendering it, rendering it unconscious, you will gain temporary hit points equal to your wisdom modifier plus your monk's level with a minimum of one temporary hit point. So if you have a bad wisdom score, which is highly doubt doubtful as a monk, then you'll get at least a minimum of one. So how it works, as long as, as, long as the creature is within five feet of you or your reaching distance, you kill it, you'll gain the temporary hit points to your wisdom modifier and monk level. So if you're level 2 with a uh, if you're level 3 take because you get this at level 3. So if you have a plus 4 wisdom and your monk level 3, you'll get 7 temporary hit points. And every time you kill something, reducing the number to 0, you'll continually get 7 more hit points. So and your temporary hit points always get taken off first before your normal hit point pool. So it's sort of like a sort of like a shield which is really nice. So Touch of Death, really nice, very useful uh, level 3 archetype. Then at level 6 you're going to get the Hour of Reaping. 
And this is where you're going to gain the ability to unsettle or terrify those around you. So as an action, uh, for your soul has been touched by the shadow of death, each creature within 30 feet of you that can see you has going to have to make a wisdom saving throw and succeed on it. Uh, and if it fails the wisdom saving throw, then it will be frightened of you until the end of your next turn. So when a creature... Uh, so basically, it, it works like this. So each creature... So you take your standard action. Each creature within 30 feet of you... That is, that's pretty powerful. Each creature within 30 feet of you that got to be able to hear you... Uh, I'm sorry, must be able to see you. They make the wisdom saving throw against your wisdom uh, saving throw DC. They fail the saving throw, then they're frightened until the next turn, until the end of your next turn, which is quite a long time. Uh, and what frightened means is they have to try to get away from you as quickly as possible. They cannot get any closer to you. They have to take its actions and get away. Frighten, pretty nice, really nice crowd control. Uh, I really like it. Hour of Reaping for level 6, pretty strong. Then at level 11, you're going to get Mastery of Death. And this is where uh, you use your familiarity with death to escape its grasp. So when you are reduced to zero hit points, you can expend one of your key points, and it requires no action at all, to bring yourself back from zero hit points to one hit point instead. That is really powerful. And you'll also notice that it does not say that you can use this once before a short rest or once before a long rest. So as long as you keep one key point in the bank, you will never die. But that's if the creature decides to go for you again, and then if you have no key points, there's a possibility you, you could die. But uh, Mastery of Death, really strong for the monk. I really like it. And then the final archetype feature that you're going to get for Touch It Along Death is at 17. And this is where you touch, where well, your touch can channel the energy of death into a creature. And this is a really nice <laughs> feature. And that's why it's at level 17. So as an action, you touch one creature within 5 feet of you, and you can expend 1 to 10 key points. Now when you declare how many key points you're going to spend, that target is going to need to make a constitution saving throw. All right? And it's going to take 2d10 necrotic damage per key point spent. Now, if they fail the saving throw, they'll take the full 2d10 per key point spent. And if they are successful on their key point saving on their on their saving throw for constitution, then they only take half as much damage. So an example is, uh, we'll say that there is a, uh, we'll say that there's something that, and remember, uh, if they're immune to necrotic damage, then this won't work. So if it's a creature that is not immune to necrotic damage, you spend, say if you spend 10 key points, that means you're going to do 20 D10 necrotic damage. Granted, yes, 10 key points is about your whole pool. But if there's something that really needs to be burned down quickly, 20d10 is a lot. <laughs> so, you know, if that creature would make the saving throw, then it would still take 10d10. And if it fails, 20d10. I mean, that's that's really nice. Touch it a long death. All four of these, all four of these features that you get for way of the long death, are really strong. Uh, you know, and coupled on top of everything else that you get with the monk. I mean, this is a this is a must play. It really is. So I hope you guys under uh, I hope you guys uh, got everything. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Please feel free to leave a comment down below. Would you play one of these monks? Would you play a way of the long death monk? Let's see. Let's hear what you guys say. Let's hear what you think about this archetype. This is really nice. So thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. And until next time, happy gaming.